Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our episodes in our series called Fly Casting. Today, I wanna to take just a few minutes and talk about a really simple concept that I think, although is very highly important in helping you become a much better fly caster. And that is the concept of the upcast and the downcast. You friends, this has been so helpful to so many folks over the years. I love hearing from you all as to how important this has been in your progression as a fly caster. But traditionally, the fly fishing industry has always referred to the first step of the cast, the first half of the cast, as the back cast, and the second half as the front cast. And I'm proposing that we forget that, and we only think in terms of upcasts and downcasts, okay? Bear with me here. We remember that the first step, okay, the first step in executing the fly cast is that we must get the end of the fly line moving. You must get it moving in the direction that you want to go, okay? And then you're going to form the loop, which we're going to talk about that extensively in coming episodes in what makes a tight loop. But for now, we're going to get to the end of the line moving. And remember that, of course, rule number one is that we start with the rod tip low. That's going to help you get it moving. Start with your rod tip in the water or on the ground. Then get it moving and then you're going to launch that cast up. It has to travel up. In fact, the best analogy I can draw is that the end of your fly line, the leader in the fly, should act just like an airplane taking off a runway. It should get going slowly and then it should launch off the tip of your rod at about that 45, 60 degree angle, just like an airplane taking off a runway. In fact, a great way to think about this is as the line travels, after you stop the tip of the rod and the line starts traveling that direction and the loop is now forming, you must have an obtuse angle off the tip of the rod, okay? If you have, let's call it 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees, the fly line is not nearly gonna pull on the tip of your rod as much as if it, if it does when it has an obtuse angle off the tip of the rod, okay? And this is so, so very important to think of this as upcasts and downcasts. Let's take another couple looks at this. I mean, first of all, uh, one of Newton's basic laws of physics, what goes up must come down, okay? They both can't be downcasts, right? You can't go down and down. The rod tip has to travel in a straight line to form a loop. Again, we're gonna talk about that. If you go down and down, you're making a rainbow, and of course, it just crashes into a big pile. That's not even a fly cast. Obviously, they both can't be up and up cast. You can't go up and then up, okay? Listen, friends, the fish are always going to be below your belt. I can guarantee you that. The fish are always going to be below your belt. If they're not, you've got really big problems, okay? You should put down the fly rod and pick up a spear because you're spear fishing. By the upcast and downcast principle, okay, if you're making a downcast, you're casting down, again, like an airplane coming in for a landing, you're casting or the trajectory of your downcast is down towards the water, okay? First of all, that's going to, you're fishing to where the fish are. Secondarily, that's gonna cut through the wind. The wind is gonna be much less here than it is up here. And number three, you're utilizing gravity to your full potential. Gravity's gonna help that line to straighten out, okay? Now this is very important as opposed to this 10 to two or scrape the ceiling flat cast. You've heard me say this before, that's a great cast if you don't wanna bend your fly rod properly and you're fishing for parrots or monkeys or parakeets in the trees. 
If you're actually fishing for fish, the upcast, downcast principle, upcast, downcast principle is going to help you out a whole bunch. Again, airplane taking off a run runway, and in our next episode, we're going to take a look at why this changes your loop formation from 10 to 1 and not 10 to 2. Okay? So, try the upcast and downcast. It's going to make a big difference. And think of the word trajectory. It has to traject upwards and downwards. And just remember that the tip of the fly rod does exactly what your thumb tells it. If my thumb tells this fly, doesn't tell the fly rod to do anything, it doesn't do anything. Okay? So the tip of the fly rod is going to follow the path of your thumb. Therefore, your thumb has to travel in an upward motion. And again, we'll talk about this in our next episode. That on a clock face, if we want to look at that way, think of that way, it's 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Now, make note, even if I'm casting sidearm, even if I'm casting sidearm, it's, you'll see that it's still an upcast and I still have an obtuse angle off the rod tip. I just wanted to make that clear because a lot of people have chimed in and they said when they make a sidearm cast they feel guilty because it's not traveling up in the air. It's really all about that obtuse angle and the line is going up at a 45-60 degree angle off of the rod tip. Okay, try that. Let me know how it goes. Please stay tuned, we got a lot more coming at you. Be sure to subscribe, it's free, and smash that like button so we can keep doing these videos for you. If you can understand and grasp and employ this concept in your airplane flying, fly as low as you can over people trying to film fly casting videos, and there you'll fuck up everything. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.